Hey guys, it's Techio here, and here is my part 2 of how to do computer programming. Now in part 1, I basically showed you guys the user interface of the program uh, builder Microsoft Visual Basic 6, and I showed you what's on the left side, what's on the top, what's on the right, and basically how to approach programming. Now if you haven't seen that video yet, uh, there will be an annotation on the screen, uh, so please go and click that. Uh, it will explain what I'm going to be doing in this video and it'll just pretty much clear some things out that you might have. Okay, so in this part two, I'm going to basically teach you uh, what I left off at before, which is the actual code of the program. So if you do remember from last time, uh, I, I put in an object, I put an object on the form and I talked about how this object, uh, such as this button right here, has uh, several properties so as you can see the properties are here now it's all fine and useful but uh, the program doesn't do anything so uh, here is where it really gets complicated this is where you're gonna make the program do stuff so okay to, to actually put it get into the programming phase or you know open up the window for programming you're gonna go to view code and so there, there you have your code um, or uh, as we're gonna do right now we're gonna double click the object we want to edit so if we want to edit this um, command one button which I should mention by the way we can change the text from command one to something like a bit more colloquial uh, such as click here so I'll, I'll, I'll name this um, button click here and uh, I'll place it right here in the middle of the uh, program so uh, as you can remember, the caption, uh, the caption property changes the text that we see. Uh, so okay, l let's double click the button now to change its property. So here we have uh, what's called the, uh, the, the procedure for the object. So here we have, it's, it's telling us that private sub command one click and sub. So uh, I know this might seem confusing at first, but it's actually rather simple. Uh, whatever code you put between private sub and end sub, that's the code that it will run when you click the button. So as you can see here, command one, which is the name of the button, as you can see, name is command one, uh, private sub of command one, when you click it, see it says here underscore click, this code runs. And as you can see here, there is actually no code because it is blank because we didn't write anything yet. And then at whatever after end sub does not count. So I can type in something here and when I, uh, it, it doesn't even work, you see, because it's not, that's not code. So if whatever I type outside of the private sub and end sub does not count for this, um, for this uh, procedure. So um, this is where you wanna go and learn some phrases uh, or not phrases uh, as much, but actions. Uh, so what we're going to be doing right now is we're, we're also going to add a, a text box so as you can see here I have a text box added right here and uh, we're going to change the text from text one because that's that's ugly and we're just going to delete it uh, again if any of this seems confusing you can go back to my previous video and uh, I think it'll clear it up a bit so so here if we double click the text box Right, we, we have the code that runs whenever you change the text in the text box. So as you can see here, uh, it's at whatever between these lines, as you can see, text one change, that's what happens when you change the text. Uh, and whatever between these lines is what, ha what happens when you click the button. So I click the button, it brings me here. I click the text box, it brings me here. Now this actually never runs until you actually press start. So here's the only time where the program is actually going to change. So I'm just going to exit out of there. So okay, let's let's get started here. So this is where it gets a little complicated. So okay, we're we're in the programming phase where we're between private sub command one click and we're between end sub. So whatever we type here is uh it's is going to run whenever we uh click the button. So uh, what's usually uh, appropriate for coding is actually doing tabs, and it just makes things a lot cleaner and nicer and easier to see. Uh, so whenever you uh, add a new line or you add a, a, a different if statement, and we'll go into those later, uh, you want to click your tab button because it really does make things easier to work with. So okay, now let's type in some code for our command one click procedure. So okay, the, the, the code we're going to be working with for this video is just going to change the properties of some other 
uh, we're going to change the properties of other objects on the form. So, so far we only have two objects on the form, this text box and this button right here. It's, so we're going to change those. So, um, whenever you click command one, see it says here private sub command one click, we're going to make sure that the text box displays something different. So, how do we do that? Okay, well, please do remember that the, the, the name, so we're going to click the text box, look what its name is. Uh, the name is actually text one. So whatever the name is here, you can change it, of course, you can change it to that, but I, I wouldn't recommend that. Whatever the, the name is here, so the name is text one, that's what you're going to refer to it to as in the actual code itself. So if we want to refer to text one, we're actually going to write text one. Now, what do we do from there? Uh, well, w what we actually do is we press period, and what you have here is actually the same thing you have on the right side. This is the list of all the properties of text one. So, as you can see, we we have a uh, uh, text tag, and uh, if we if you look here, you have text and tag as well. These are just all the properties that text one uh, has. So we're going to change the text property of text one, and that might sound a little confusing, but all it means is that we're going to change the text that appears there. So we're going to write text one dot text equals and what's important to know uh, to remember here is that you always have to use quotation marks uh, reason being is because uh, whenever something doesn't have quotation marks it actually means you're referring to a variable and we don't have any variables right now and I'm not gonna go into variables right now but uh, you, you want to make sure you have quotation marks so so uh, we're gonna write hello YouTube hope you are learning something and we're going to close off the text marks and and that's all you have to do right now uh, to make sure how this works notice if I click it here nothing happens because we're not running the program so we have to press the run button we're gonna click here and we actually have the text in the text box now as you can see the the text doesn't entirely fit so we're gonna make this a little bigger and uh, click it now and here we are uh, now this is all fine and dandy but it's it's not entirely useful uh, so this is just an overview really of um, the, the things you can change so uh, let, let's see here uh, okay I have a good idea we're gonna make a diff a, a two button game okay uh, so I, if I delete text one notice what happens when I run the program it says object re required that's because I deleted the text box and if we actually press debug it's going to bring us to the line that caused the error. So as you can see, this line caused the error because it calls for text one, but text one doesn't exist. Uh, so now what we're actually going to do is we're going to change the name of command one because command one usually is not a, a good way to refer to buttons. We're gonna click and we're gonna call it CMD, which actually just stands for command, and we're gonna name it CMD, um, CMD click here. And now, whenever we have to refer to this button in the code, as you can see, it has its separate procedure, and we can just delete this one because uh, whatever we refer to the code is actually the name of the object. So we're going to make one button here, and we're going to put a second button over here. And we're going to name that CMD click here number two. And uh, you, you want to make sure you don't name it the same way, so we're going to click here, click here. Okay, so now they're pretty much identical buttons. That one's just a little bit bigger, but no big deal. Now that they're nice and sitting there, if you remember from my last video, I, I actually described this little property called enabled. And basically what enabled does is it actually uh, it actually uh, describes it right here. It returns sets of value that determines whether an object can respond to. So uh, that may not make a lot of sense, but uh, hopefully this explanation will uh, clear it up. Uh, enabled basically means if you can actually interact with the object. So notice if I put uh, uh, both both the objects are enabled right now. So notice if I put one to be set as false, and we run the program, as you can see here, one of them is not able to be clicked while the other one is. So uh, that's not very useful right now. But what I'm going to show you, uh, hopefully, will make some things useful. Well. Yeah. Okay. So let's let's get down to the programming side of things. We're gonna uh, change the code for this button, and to do that, uh, remember we have to double click it. So here is the code that we have for this um, procedure. So okay, uh, w what do we do now? W well, the goal of our program, uh, we're gonna try to make it so that when you click this button, 
it becomes disabled and this one becomes enabled and when then when you click this button it becomes disabled and this one becomes enabled so it's just like a back and forth clicking game so uh, to do that uh, we're, we're going to be uh, changing some of the code so if you guys want to pause the video and try to figure it out for yourselves and then see if you get it right that would be awesome uh, otherwise you can uh, just see how I do it so the way I'm going to approach this uh, problem is First of all, remember that the enabled uh, is the enabled is actually a property. So we're going to have to uh, n refer to the object, which is CMD. Click here. Click here. Dot enabled instead of text, as in the last one equals, and then we can actually set it to false or true. If we set it to false, the button will not work, and if we set it to true, the button will work. So we're going to set that to false and we're actually going to set the second one to true right so uh, we'll just set this one at to false right now and so when we click here they change the uh, the sign but notice if we click here nothing happens so that's not really completing the goal of our program again if you guys want to try to do it yourself right now uh, you're more than welcome to so now that we have that finished, we're halfway there. Now we have to uh, make the code for the second uh, button. And notice how it's a completely different procedure because it's a completely different object. So now we're going to do just the opposite of that. We're going to do cmd click here dot enabled equals true instead of false. And cmd click here too dot enabled equals false. So now what we have here is actually a back and forth clicking game that we can just go like this. And it's a pretty useless, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty useless a application as of now. But um, now we're going to do just something a little more complicated. Now hopefully you guys have been playing around with the, uh, the objects from video one, uh, such as the label, and uh, that's actually what we're going to be using right now. We're going to use the label. Uh, object and we're gonna change the label so we go to caption we're gonna erase it because label one is ugly and we're going to call this LBO which is basically referring to label and counter so it, it's basically if you if you guys are familiar with internet counters or website counters it's basically it counts the number of times you visit a web page now what this counter is going to do is we're, is it's gonna count every time we click the button so that may sound a little bit complicated, but it's actually not really. So, okay, so um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and plug it in some code for both of these procedures. So we're going to refer to it. Remember, we called it LBO counter. We're going to press dot caption, and we're going to actually um, we're going to do LBO caption. LBL, my bad, LBL counter dot caption plus one. Now, if you guys aren't sure why I'm doing that, think about it this way. Every time you click the button, it's going to bring back the same value that it was before, which I should set to as zero. And then it's just going to add one. If I just, if I do plus one, that just means one. So it's going to always keep it at one. So we don't want to do that, so we're going to keep it at LBO counter plus one. If that doesn't make sense, you guys could uh, let me know. I'll, I'll, I'll make sure to explain it uh, personally in a message if you guys want me to. So we're going to copy that code, and we're going to put it in the same, uh, in the opposite procedure, and now we're going to see if it actually works. So uh, our counter is now set at zero, and we keep clicking, and we click back and forth, and notice how the counter will keep rising and rising and rising and rising and now we're just going to do one last button and that's just going to be uh, a nice reset button so we're gonna make some space for the reset button we're gonna make it nice and small and if you got if you guys can guess what I'm gonna call it then kudos to you uh, it's I'm actually gonna call it CMD uh, reset and if you figure that out then you're pretty smart uh, we're gonna change the caption to reset so it makes it clear that that's what uh, the, the button does and so I'm just having a little bit difficulty typing right there so if you guys can uh, guess what the code is here I will really be impressed uh, it's actually going to be LBO counter which we're referring to dot caption 
equals zero. So that's that's what it's gonna set to the it's gonna set the um, the caption to that. And uh, you want to just uh, play it safe and put quotation marks around the zero because that's just the way we like to play. And so we can click back and forth, see who can do it the fastest. Just go like this, do it crazy, do it crazy, and then we can press reset, and we can just play again. And this is actually a very fun game, as you can see. I'm enjoying myself quite heavily. And just reset, and that's basically uh, the introduction to coding. Uh, this is this has been the second video in a series of videos that I'm hoping to make to actually spread programming to the 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 the. the the, the, the majority of people who have always wanted to uh, try it to the masses, to the crowds. And hopefully you guys have learned something. If you have, please let me know. Please do subscribe for future videos uh, on how to program. So once again, thank you guys for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.